Hello students, this is Harpreet Kaur from English Rock Club and I am back with another chapter for class 10 students. The title of the chapter is The Making of a Scientist and it is chapter 6 of your NCRT book Footprints Without Feet. Let's begin the chapter right now. So this chapter is about Richard Abright who has received the Cyril Scholar Award and Serin Plow Award for Biochemistry in Molecular Biology. It was his fascination for butterflies that opened the world of science to him. So let's now just look how this little lit, uh, Richard Abright was made a scientist. Let's go into his life story right now. At the age of 22, a former scout of the year, excited the scientific world with a new theory on how cells work. Richard H. A. Bright and his college roommate explained the theory in an article in the Proceedings of National Academy of Science. So here uh, we are given that when he was just, Richard A. Bright was just 22 years old, he received he got a very presti uh, prestigious thing. He was proud to become the youngest, uh, uh, youngest person whose theory was published in the Proceedings of National Academy of Science. He along with his uh, roommate and colleague had explained this theory in this article. Okay. So let's move further. It was the first time this important scientific journal had ever published the work of college students. In sports, that would be like making the big leagues at the age of 15 and hitting a home run your first time at the bat. For Richard Abright, it was the first in a long string of achievements in science and other fields. And it all started with butterflies. Now let's just look at this paragraph. So why this, uh, uh, it was really important uh, for Richard Abright and his colleague to get uh, their article published in the journal because it was for the first time in the history of the publication of the journal that a very young scientist uh, articles were being published. So here the writer is equating their achievement of publication in the journal with the achievement of some sports person who had received a home run who had who had got the leagues at an age of 15 so it uh, the here the writer is equating those things so but for richard it was just the first uh, achievement in the long string of achievement so after this uh, he was going to have achievement after achievement that was going to add to be added in the string of his achievements and it all started because of butterflies it was his interest in butterflies that made him uh, achieve this uh, achieve, um, that made him achieve this uh, success now let's le read further an only child now we are going to read something about the about richard's childhood an only child abred grew, grew up north of Reading, Pennsylvania. There wasn't much I could do there, he said. I certainly couldn't play football or baseball with a team of one. But there was one thing I could do was to collect things. So, uh, Richard Abright used to live in Reading, which is in Pennsylvania. And he used to live in the north direction of this city. And he was the only child and he was the only child there and uh, he was did not have any kind of company there there were no age mates so it was he wasn't able to play anything just like baseball or football because he ha was only one person so he was left with nothing to do but he uh, utilized his time for doing certain constructive things and that was to collect things so he utilized his leisure time in uh, not in playing rather than in collecting things so he did and he did he ever 
beginning in kindergarten so when did he start collecting the things when he was just in kindergarten abright collected butterflies with same determination that has marked all his activities he also collected rocks fossils coins he became an eager astronomer too sometimes stargazing at night so a little interest of abright is described in this paragraph so when did he start collection started a, a collection as his hobby when he was just a little kid going to a kindergarten and he started collecting butterflies with full determination and he never get, uh, got bored out of collecting the butterflies when he was just a kid and uh, other things that he used to collect were rocks fossils coins and he also was an eager astronomer he used to gaze the stars at night in order to spend his time and he this gave him gave wings to his imagination let's move further from the first he had a driving curiosity along with bright mind he also had a mother who encouraged him his encouraged his interest in learning she took him on trips bought him telescopes microscopes cameras mounting material and other equipment and helped him in many ways okay so he was blessed with curiosity he was having a uh, driving curiosity and he was also blessed with a sharp mind so these things were inborn inborn in him and apart from this his parent that is his mother also uh, is responsible for his uh, interest in science as he encouraged uh, interest in learning as he encouraged interest in learning he took him on trips he bought telescopes microscopes cameras and all the material that he required I was his only companion until he started school his mother said after that i would bring home friends for him but at night we just did things together richie was my whole life after his father died when richie was in third grade so richie richard abright lost his father when he was in third grade and uh, because of that uh, he was all alone and uh, he did not have any child to play along with but uh, he also lost his father so his mother was the only companion and friend for him she and her son spent almost every evening at the dining room table if he didn't have things to do i found some work for him not physical work but learning things his mother said he liked it he wanted to learn so as uh, every mother thinks uh, how uh, she can get uh, his or her child into work in the same way richard abright's mother always thought of how to get him into work but he, she uh, was different in this aspect that she never wanted his child to be involved in physical work what she wanted her, her child to be involved in learning things so she planned certain things uh, for him and uh, he started learning and he learned he did he earned top grades in school on every day things he was just like every other kids his mother said by the time he was in the second grade abright had collected all 25 species of butterfly found around his hometown so Uh, because of his mother he got interested in learning and he started learning and his grades in school went up and he proved himself in the school and uh, uh, by that and because of his hobby of collection by the time he was just in second grade okay and he was able to collect all the 25 species of butterflies find around his hometown so here we get a glimpse of what kind of butterflies he collected in this particular chart that is given uh, in the box uh, so there are different kinds of uh, names of the butterflies 25 different species of butterflies are mentioned here in this paragraph okay so that would ha- that probably would have been the end of my butterfly collecting he said but then my mother got me a children's book called 
the travel of monarch x that book which told how monarch butterflies migrate to central america opened the world of science to the eager young collector so richard ebright here is recalling that he would have lost interest in collecting of the butterflies because all of the uh, kinds of butterflies the species of butterflies were available in uh, his hometown he had already collecting collected but it was because of this book that was presented uh, by her, his mother the title of the book was the travel of monarch x so reading this book uh, he got interested in butterflies more so uh, what was there uh, in this book was the travel pattern of uh, the migration of the bird of the butterflies were given in this book and this young scientist got eager in learning about monarch x that species of the butterfly at the end of the book readers were invited to help study butterfly migrations they were asked to tag butterflies for research by dr fadrick a urquart of university of toronto canada abright's mother wrote to dr urquart and soon abright was attaching light adhesive tags to the wings of monarchs anyone who found a tag butterfly butterfly was asked to send the tag to dr urquart so at the end of the book a task was given for the readers and that task was to collect the butterflies and tag those butterflies and send them to the research for dr afred to research and dr fadrick a urquart who was uh in university of toronto canada and abright mother on the insistence of abright wrote to dr urquart and soon he was also a part of the project of collecting and tagging the butterflies so he started tagging the butterflies the which he used to catch the butterfly collecting season around reading last 6 weeks in late summer if you are going to chase them one by one you won't catch very many very many so the next step for abright was to raise a flock of butterflies he would catch a female monarch take her eggs and raise them in his basement through life cycle from egg to caterpillar to pupa to adult butterfly then he would tag the butterfly's wings and let them go for several years his basement was home to thousands of monarchs in different stages of development so richard abright was very bright he thought that the season for the butterflies to be there in reading was very short it was only 6 weeks that is one and a half month only during the late summer and then he thought if he would be chasing the butterflies one by one it will be really difficult to catch the butterflies then he thought of an idea what was an idea that was to raise the flock of butterflies himself so to raise the flock of butterflies what did he need he needed a female for that so he got, would catch a female monarch and then he used to take his its eggs and raise them in his basement so the whole life cycle of the butterflies from egg to caterpillar to pupa to the adult butterfly all the steps in, involved in the life cycle of the butterflies he was able to see in reality and watch them grow and this made wings to his uh, imagination also and he got a real experience of the development stages of development in the butterflies so after the butter uh, the butterflies used to become adult and he used to tag the butterfly on the wings and let them go for several years many years he used to work on this thing and he had uh, raised thousands of monarch in different stages of development his uh, basement was home to butterflies here we are given a graph a bar graph on the some kinds of the butterflies that richard abright used to raise in his basement and it shows that he has raised uh, many butterflies and now he had collected many number of butterflies now let's begin reading the next paragraph eventually i began to lose interest in tagging butterflies 
it's tedious and there's not much feedback. Abrick said, in all the time I did, he laughed. Only two butterflies I had tagged were recaptured and they were not more than 75 miles away from where I lived. So eventually, mean ultimately with, with the passage of time, he lost, started losing interest in tagging of the butterflies because it was a tedious, it was a very uh, lengthy process to tag them and he did not get much feedback as uh, only two of the butterflies he tagged uh, were recaptured and uh, it was only it was a, for a very short distance that was just 75 miles away from where Richard lived. So that's all in this part of the chapter explanation. We'll meet again in the next part of the chapter explanation in part two of the making of a scientist. See you till then and if you consider uh, this video is useful to you consider subscribing to my channel and hit the bell icon bye for now